Greetings and welcome to another VMBlock screencast. In this screencast, we're going to take a deeper dive into the Liquidity protocol. And in today's screencast, we're going to focus on looking at the stability pool and liquidations. So let's take a look. So what is the liquidity, stability pool and liquidations? This is what we're going to cover today. We're going to look at liquidations and the stability pool, of course. We're going to look at how we can liquidate troves. We're going to look at what is the uh, compensation for stability providers and what happens if the stability pool is empty or very low when liquidations occur. So the stability pool is where holders of LUSD can deposit their LUSD funds into that pool. But the question is, why would you want to do that? So here we can see Alice and Bob depositing LUSD into this LUSD stability pool. But the question is, why would you open a trove with some ETH and then get some LUSD back only to just immediately deposit that into a stability pool? What is the reason for doing that? What is the purpose of the stability pool? What benefits does it give to the protocol and to the users? So the stability pool is a first line of defense to maintain system solvency in liquidity. And it achieves this by acting as a source of liquidity to pay back the debt from liquidated troves. And this ensures that the total LUSD supply always remains backed. So the stability pool is funded by the users transferring LUSD into it. And the users that do this are called the stability providers. Now, over time, stability providers will lose a pro rata share of their LUSD deposits while gaining a pro rata share of the liquidated collateral. This is through a process of burning the LUSD and transferring the collateral from the troves into another pool. We're going to dive into this in the next few slides. Now, because troves are likely to be liquidated at just below 100 and 10% of the collateral ratios, you can expect that stability providers will receive a greater dollar value, dollar value of the collateral received to pay this debt off. In other words, if you deposit your LUSD into the stability pool and a trove is then liquidated, then the collateral that you will receive as a reward for doing that will likely be greater than the dollar value that was burnt. So there is an incentive to do this. So what happens during a liquidation process in liquidity? Well, the first thing that happens is that whenever any trove is liquidated, the amount of LUSD corresponding to the remaining debt of the trove is burnt from the stability pool's balance. So down below here in this diagram, we've got a trove here, a risky trove, in fact, and that, that's represented here by its debt or in this red line, and this is the collateral. And the CR is below 110%, so it's a risky trove, and it's about to be liquidated. And over here we've got the pool. So what happens is the trove essentially says, hey, can you burn this quantity of LUSD, please, because I'm about to be liquidated. And the pool then will send the LUSD to a burn address. So this is the first step of the liquidation uh, process. The risky trove is liquidated by first removing the debt by burning the corresponding amount of LUSD in the pool by sending that to a burn address. This offsets the debt by the stability pool. What's next? Well, the trove's uh, collateral is then sent to another pool. So here we have the trove, the risky trove. And now what happens is it says, please move this ETH collateral to the collateral pool. So over here, we've got a nice uh, reward, if you like, for all the stability providers, because this collateral here is now moved into here. And by the way, for each stability provider, they will receive the proportion of this collateral into their own accounts and we will see that in the user interface after this slide so this is the next step so now the trove is basically 
complete. The liquidation, I should say, of this trove is complete. So if we draw out the trove here, basically the trove is now fully liquidated. The debt of the trove is cancelled and absorbed by the stability pool and its collateral is distributed among the stability providers via the collateral pool. Now the owner of the trove, by the way, still keeps the full amount of LUSD borrowed because that LUSD, remember, has been transferred already to their wallet. But they will lose approximately 10% of the value and therefore it's critical to keep your CR above 110% and ideally above 150%. So essentially a liquidation process means that the borrower has lost around 10% of the value and of course they lose their collateral. And for the stability provider, they gain the difference in the value of the US dollar versus the collateral. Now, there's another situation, which is what if the under collateralized debt is greater than the LUSD in the pool? So let's take a look at that scenario. So here we have a risky trove and on the, on the left here, and the debt is represented by this red bar. And so the Trove LUSD debt here is actually greater than the amount of LUSD in the pool. So the pool is a little bit small and it's basically too small to cover the debt of this risky Trove. So this is the scenario, but what happens? How do we resolve this situation? Well, we fall back into what's called the Trove redistribution mechanism. So here we've got our risky trove and what happens is is that we first redistribute the debt of that trove to the other healthy troves in the system. So this is a redistribution of the debt from the risky trove to all the healthy troves in the proportion of the troves in the system. So here we have only got two troves, two, two other troves in the system. But of course, in mainnet, there'll probably be hundreds of different troves. And so this will be redistributed across all of the other troves. So the debt is added to these troves. So these bars would go up in these other troves, and this would be completely removed from the risky trove. And the second step of the redistribution approach is that the collateral is moved to the other troves in the system at the same ratios. So in other words, the everything from the risky trove is redistributed across all the other troves in the system, such that the other troves in the system will have increased debt, but also increased collateral. And this should result in a net profit for all of the troves, slightly because they are they should be receiving a collateral that is going to be about or just under 10% greater than the debt that they receive because they're being transferred the full CR at this point. So it should be, so it should keep their collateral ratio uh, intact. So that's how the redistribution mechanism works in liquidity. Should the stability pool not be sufficient to cover the debt of a liquidated trove? So at the end of that, we end up with the trove being fully liquidated. Over here, this trove is now liquidated. And the rest of the troves now contain the collateral and the debt obligation. So I want to summarize what the system does and what we just discussed. So to recall, when the total system collateral, collateral ratio is greater than 150%, then we have two mechanisms that we will follow. When the trove falls below 110% collateral ratio, then the first port of call is to use the stability pool to absorb the debt and collateral of the liquidated trove. And if that doesn't work because the stability pool doesn't have enough funds to cover the debt, then the redistribution mechanism is what occurs. And this is where all the debt and collateral is redistributed across all the borrower's troves. 
So that's the two scenarios that occur in the system when the total system collateral, collateral ratio is 150% or more. Now there's another scenario where the total system collateral ratio is less than 150%, and this is when the system will fall in something called recovery mode. And in this mode, it's something, a slightly different mechanism that happens for the liquidation process. And this is something I want to cover in another screencast. So for now, we've looked at this sort of healthy environment where we liquidate using stability pool and redistribution mechanisms. Finally, I want to cover quickly the difference between liquidity and existing CD platforms. So existing CD platforms, collateralized debt platforms, that is, follow a process of liquidation where they have auctions or they have a fixed price sell-off or a fire sale. And there are some issues with this, such that it's slow and fragile, that auctions can take time and there's fragility there as well, and fixed price sell-offs require discounts. Now compare that with liquidity, which has an instant liquidation mechanism and that they can use existing uh, stakeholders to liquidate the troves using the stability pool, as we just discovered. And this results in a fast and efficient system that doesn't need to then find a buyer or a bidder at time of liquidation. And there's no risk of further price drops during the liquidation process because it's immediate. So these, these are the differences between most other collateralized debt platforms and liquidity. Finally, who can liquidate uh, troves? Well, the answer to that is I can, you can, we all can. Basically, anyone can liquidate troves, as long as it drops below the minimum collateral ratio of 110%. And the initiator will receive a gas comp compensation, which is 200 LUSD, plus 0.5% of the troves collateral as a reward for doing so. And this is exactly what we're going to do in the demo next. I've spun up the Liquity UI running on my local machine. I've done this by cloning from the GitHub repository of Liquity and starting the demo version of the system. If you want to refresh on how to do that, please take a look at the previous screencast that I made. I'll link to that in the description. Moreover, I've already created a trove. As you can see here, I've created a trove with 10 ETH of collateral and I've borrowed $10,250, or I have a debt of $10,250. Actually, you can see my wallet balance up the top here is $10,000, that's how much I've borrowed. And the extra debt, if you remember from the previous lesson, is related to the stability pool um, fee or holder fee that gets paid to the liquidators and the $50 would be the actual fee for borrowing the money. So this is the situation we have. If you can look over here as well on the protocol, I've already created seven troves as well. So we've got a system that's already in place and running. And what I want to do in this demo is add some of my LUSD to the stability pool, and then I want to liquidate a trove. So in order to add to the stability pool, I come down here and I click on deposit. I'm going to click max to deposit all of my LUSD into the stability pool. You can see by doing so, I get quite a good share. This is probably not going to happen in mainnet, but this makes for easy calculations, I guess, because we've got 65% of the pool share. So let's go ahead and confirm that. So now what's happening is I've got 10,000 US dollars in this stability pool, which means I have 65% of the pool. So let's see about liquidating a trove. So if we click on risky troves, we can see a list of risky troves here. And we can see that there's one here that's just about to be liquidated or just about to fall below the 110% threshold. So let's go back to the dashboard and slightly lower the price of ETH to cause that to fall into a risky trove that can be liquidated. 
So I'll just lower ETH to $1,800 and that's successful. Now we go back to risky troves and we can see that this trove here has fallen below, way below the collateralization ratio of 110%. Uh, now, this means that if I liquidate this, which I will, I'll get two ETH or two ETH will be sent to the stability pool uh, collateral pool and the debt remember will be burnt from the LUSD pool so this will be burnt this will be transferred and then distributed amongst all the stability providers of which I am one so I should receive approximately 65% of this two ETH here so let's go ahead and click liquidate and that has been successful now we can go back to the dashboard and you can see that my deposit has dropped. My, my deposit of LUSD has dropped, but my liquidation gain has now gone up by 1.3 ETH, which is approximately 65% of the ETH that was the collateral in the trove that we just liquidated. And my USD has dropped by an amount that is proportional to my share of the stability pool and that has basically been burnt, that, that LUSD has been burnt. But I'm, I'm okay with that, I'm happy with that because uh, the value of the ETH that I've received is greater than the amount of LUSD that has been burnt. Moreover, you can see that I've been rewarded some LQTY tokens. This is the protocol token. This is a reward that's just offered and given to anyone that puts money into the stability pool and paid on a, on a minute by minute basis. So this has been updated because the UI has updated. So we, we've got this, we got these benefits now and I can do one of two things with this now. I can claim the ETH and liquidity token, LQTY token, or I can claim the LQTY token and move the ETH to the trove. So if I look at my trove, I can see I've got a very healthy CR here. So I'm going to just claim the ETH and the liquidity. So if I click that, these balances go back to zero. If I check up in the top here, my, my wallet, I've got the ETH and I've got the LQTY token transferred. And note that my pool share actually hasn't changed, even though the deposit has, because the tokens have been burnt. And so now, if we wanted to, or if there was another risky trove liquidation, we could keep proceeding with this until all the troves are liquidated, that are, need to be liquidated. So that's really how we can use the stability pool in liquidity through the user interface, and how we can liquidate troves using the risky troves setting and the, list, and the risky troves liquidation UI. So I hope you enjoyed this screencast. I hope you learned a little bit about how liquidity works. And next up, we're going to be covering in a new in the new screencast how liquidity gets the price of ETH in mainnet because it doesn't use this, of course. Otherwise, everyone could just have a lot of fun. Um, the price of ETH is coming from an external price feed using pricing oracles. And that is what we're going to cover in the next screencast. So I hope to see you there. And in the meantime, take care and thank you for watching.